we have um, a great topic today, everybody. And um, it's really about the promises we keep to ourselves. So I'm excited to get started. Oh, I got some amazing people on here. Yep, we have an amazing tribe, I agree. And what I love and what I found are my ideal clients, because you know, we have to get to a point in our life where, where we know who we are. And this is part of what will be today is keeping these promises to ourselves. But I seem to draw in people that want to embrace change and transfer, transformation, right? Where you reach a certain point in your life and you're like, you know what? I'd like to let go of that. Or I'd like to embrace this. I'd like to do that and I can do it. And that brings me a lot of soul purpose. When people say, how do you... What do you do for sole purpose is I get to do what I do every day, right? So I say we get into content. What do you think? Yeah. All right. You're, it's rough and scared. I understand, Debbie. Yep, I do. Well, let's work on in this visualization of being um, mindful of who we are, the promises we keep, and how that benefits us in our own life. Not how it benefits everybody else. This is about you. We right now are in a collective of where we're all experiencing something together in a sense, but each of us are experiencing it differently because it pertains to us. What do we want to change in our life? What do we want to let go of? What do we want to have more of? It's an awareness that we're being forced to bring to, you know, forced to step into, isn't it? So I'm looking forward to helping you. All right. Annapurna, hello. Hello. Okay, let's do this. This makes me happy. Okay. Welcome, welcome. And I'm excited to go deeper on the idea of promises. Mm -hmm. Promises are commitments to yourself and share and, and I want to share why they are so vital to your sense of self-worth and confidence. My hope is that by the end of this visualization, in our chat, you will allow yourself to put your own promises, your own commitments as a priority in your life. So let's begin by taking a dip into this week's topic so you can, so you can better understand yourself, let go of any patterns of dishonoring that are, you know, we inherit dishonoring patterns, okay? that have possibly been keeping you from your promises to yourself. Which leads to the first key point of promise yourself to honor yourself. Oh, wow, there's a mic drop, right? Promise yourself to honor yourself. Mm -hmm. We've discussed in, in the past together how it's okay to put yourself first and with doing so without any guilt or shame. In fact, we've talked about how to put yourself first actually helps you serve more people around you. The act of keeping your promise to yourself takes this idea even deeper because the act of fulfilling your own promises reminds you that you deserve to feel a sense of honor around what you do and who you are. Ultimately, most of us have been taught that to give ourselves a pat on the back is egotistic or selfish. But in fact, honoring yourself after completing a self-promise must, <laughs> must, must happen, okay? It's a must-be acknowledgement 
that you want to integrate into you, into your being. Because it's the greatest representation of your own ability to express your personal power. Stand by your choices and own your results. Mm, and when you do, when you honor yourself, you set a new standard to the world around you that you will not be taken for granted or undervalued. You have a deeper sense of self-worth with every promise you make that, that you keep, right? The most important person is you. So you get a deeper sense of yourself with every promise you keep to the most important person, you. Number two, the surge of self-accountability. There is an extremely special and unique uniqueness about the energy surge you receive when you hold yourself accountable to your self-promises. Why? Because you, you do this alone. This is what serves your highest good. It's the same as, here's an analogy. For example, it's the same as choosing to hike up a top mountain, you know, the side of a mountain. And when you get to the top, you bask in that glow of the summit, knowing that you carried yourself to the peak of your progress on that mountain, right? And I'm talking about it physically. If you physically go hiking, you know what I'm talking about. This liberating sense of self-ownership can only be accessed when you make yourself a promise without outside accountability. Mm -hmm. It's simply your own little secret between you and you. Plus, when you keep your self promises under wraps, okay, you can avoid a potential energy block, sabotaging that sidetracks so many wonderful people with wonderful intentions. While some people thrive, okay, in proclaiming their self promise to the world, many times that public announcement can lead to triggers of overwhelm, un unneeded pressures when they start to, it's human nature to start to second guess their ability. Especially if you have an inherited pattern that reminds you of a false story of telling yourself that you always say the wrong thing. Don't risk offending somebody. Or what about the pattern of never following through? Now you might follow through for others. We're not, this has nothing to do with other people. It has a hundred percent to do with you. This is another reason why, why being okay with keeping your self promise, you know, keeping yourself, your self promise silence, silent, right? Just with you can help you scream literally to the loudest when you achieve it, when you achieve your intention, when you achieve the goal you're setting. It's a whole different win. And number three, self-promise, self-care. So many of us hear about the importance of self-care activities, you know, to help us heal, rejuvenate, and relax. Things like meditations, time in nature, float tank, yoga, and even enjoying a morning, you know, your morning with your favorite cup of tea while listening to your favorite music. We've even talked about it, right? This is deeper than that. This is the self-promise to keep your commitments with yourself. Now, what if you could approach your new goals with the same reverence and appreciation? Going, 
going into the pursuits of your goals with a with that perspective of keeping your promises, okay, is taking care of you. It's not selfish. It's taking care of you. It will allow you to step into your soul purpose on a even even more visibility, even more um, in what you came to earth to do. But we can't step into that purpose if we are always living up to the measurements of other people and we don't keep our promises to ourselves. So here's a quick example of how it gets complicated. Okay, let's say you make a promise to yourself. You create these rules with yourself that you want to lose 10 pounds. And to accomplish that, you will go on a daily walk. You're going to drink a half gallon of water a day, and you're going to cut out your favorite addictive snacks. It's not an unfamiliar goal, is it? Now, if you approach this new promise, like most, these three activities carry a weight, a burden. I have to do this. I won't lose my 10 pounds or meet my objective if I falter at all. I'll never reach it. You see the pressure it puts on you? And each time you attempt to walk, increase your water, and never eat junk food again, it can build up <laughs> as a sense of resistance, resentment, and frustration. Until those, emotionals, uh, those emotions eventually sabotage your actions and you break your self-promise. Mm -hmm. But if you looked at these three actions in a different way, if you looked at the three actions as a way to honor your body, that each time you do it, you know, you bring you bring enjoyment into your life. You enjoy doing them. <laughs> Hold on. So it's a complete shift in the mindset and your energy field. I have been gargling with salt water. It's getting better. But I'm going to repeat that, okay? When we approach those three actions to honor your body from that perspective, each time you do it, you're going to enjoy bringing honor to yourself, honor to your body. It's a complete shift and an energetic perspective. Now your daily walks, right, they, they make you glow with gratitude, as you notice the things around you and you feel movement in your body, every sip of your water is a cleansing experience. As you know that you're even gonna feel less anxiety when your cells are hydrated. Mm -hmm. And when you say no to that chocolate donut, you feel pride in owning your self-empowerment. What a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I hope you see. I know it's a distraction. I'm sorry. I hope you now see within yourself that every time you keep your own promise, right, to yourself, you give yourself permission to celebrate, to expand, to step into purpose, even on a greater scale. And you truly give yourself permission to find this passion in your life of what makes you passionate, of what fills your soul's purpose. It's exciting and it is a game changer. And it's the perfect time that we are in right now. It's to start living in integrity and keep your promises to yourself. Now, I wanted to share with you a special guided visualization around our topic as well. This way you can immediately begin the journey of honoring yourself, promising, promising yourself and keeping that. And I'd like to do that starting now, okay? 
and then I'll come back in and respond. Okay, so stick with me. I'm going to cover my screen and just go into, just listen to my words and create it as you hear me. Okay, there's no right or wrong to a visualization, none. And it's a process of allowing your mind to do it. Everything helps in retraining the brain. Okay, so here we go. I cover my camera for a variety of reasons. Here we go, I get into my zone. All right, so I'm here even though you can't see me. There we go. Okay. Let's begin by finding a comfortable position, preferably with your feet on the ground. Now, with your eyes closed, let's begin by taking some breaths. This brings awareness to the body and a sense of peace and balance. So here we go. Fill your lungs. Taking this deep breath in, filling your lungs to capacity. Now don't let it out. Hold it. Hold the breath. A little bit longer. There you go. Now give a big exhale as you release the day's tensions, the grief, the worrying. There you go. On the next breath, take a belly breath. Now breathe into your stomach, feeling it to capacity. So you extend the stomach on a belly, belly breath. And as it fills to capacity, I want you to imagine a cord attached to the inside of your belly button with the other end attached to your spinal cord. On the exhale, Sense this cord pulling your stomach back to your vertebrae. There you go. On the exhale, letting all the breath out as the cord pulls your stomach even more tight. You've got more. And there you go. Activating the central nervous system, activating it on all levels and dimensions. There we go. Now, one last breath. As you feel your lungs to capacity, Okay, imagine you are carrying the breath up into your brain. So you take the breath, you fill it to capacity in the lungs, and you can imagine that it's extending up into the brain, activating the right and the left hemisphere and activating the cells of your body to allow change and transformation in what does not serve you anymore. There you go. Now returning your breath to a normal flow as I count from three to one. Three, you become more deeply relaxed in a sense of being. Two, the sounds around you allow you to go deeper relaxed. And one, you sense, feel, and imagine that you are sitting at an antique wooden table. Gently running your hands over the top of the table. You feel the unique texture of it. You see and feel the sense of honor, respect, and care along with the love that was put into creating this table. As you gaze upon it, a smile of deep appreciation crosses your face from the inside of you out. Closing your eyes and taking a breath in through your nose, Mm -hmm. You begin to smell the aroma of the wood. It's as if you are smelling the quality and craftsmanship of it. Opening your eyes, you notice a journal in front of you, located in the center of the antique table. 
The journal cover is made of exquisite leather. Lying next to the journal is a beautiful fine point pen of the highest quality. You reach forward, picking up the journal, you open to find it filled with empty pages. Ah, empty pages that seem to call you on a deep level. You begin to hear faint whispers. As your hand reaches for the pen, where it feels perfect in your hand. This pen was made for you. It's a natural extension of you. Looking down at the first blank page of your journal, the whispers come clear as they say, create your promises. And you begin to write in your journal. This is no ordinary writing. For as you write your promises to yourself, the pages begin to fill with the most inspiring artwork. Each one of the promises you write is revealed completely through the art. As you write out your promise, you're bringing it to life and completion simultaneously. With every stroke of your pen, you feel a cascade of glorious emotions wash over you. Mm, gratitude, pride, self-esteem. joy, confidence, fearlessness, abundance, laughter, and love. And the more you write out your promises, the more you know in your heart and soul that it is all real. This is all yours. You've always deserved to fulfill your own promises. Finding yourself writing out the final page of your journal. You close the leather bound journal and bring it to your chest. Your arms embrace it as a part of you, a part of all that you are. You close your eyes and while taking a breath in, ah, oh, you exhale, feeling your hands against your heart. Where did your journal go? You've allowed it to become part of you. Now all of your promises are within you. Each day you carry them forward with you as you are a creator and a fulfiller of the promise that is you. The world rejoices that you are here ready to rise in your greatness. You are ready to live out your promises as you embrace life with integrity in who you are. Now, bringing your awareness back to the breath, I will count from one to three and you will come back to your original space with clarity and confidence to honor your promises. One, bringing your awareness back to the body. 
two, activating the cells in your body with a new integrated soul's truth of your soul's promises to this life. Three, eyes wide open as you are now fully accepting of receiving the answers that you seek to live your life purpose. How are you? you with me? I had like goosebumps in there. Okay. Hi, Beth. Hi, Sharon. All right. And Stephanie Rivera, I love your heart right back at you, dear. All right. You need to send me healing energy. I'll take that, Anna. Yep. You know, I speak all day long. And I actually, I've gotten to a point in my life where I love, this doesn't, I love it, right? I love helping other people be um, in alignment with who they are, right? But it's a physical body. That's all I can say. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Anna. I'll take any healing your way. Okay. Hello, girlfriend. Missed you. Well, you're here with me. You didn't miss anything. Oh, Shannon, thank you. Or Sharon. Sharon, thank you. Thank you. You enjoyed the visualization. So perfect for you, Dina, dear. So perfect. Okay. Yeah. And Beth has improved being more in touch with loving myself. I get to see or work with you in the morning. And I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Um. Anybody, you do not have to. I'm actually sitting at an antique desk with your notebook, Dina. I love it. Okay. When I talked about promises or being in integrity with yourself, if you feel comfortable, share with me what came up. Okay. Share with me what you want to start doing, maybe. Or what is a little way that you can keep your promise to yourself? Some ways for me, okay, is because I love to help and I don't feel per se, I can feel like I'm working, but not really when I'm doing my work. Follow me? I'm aware of it because I'm helping somebody, but my sessions don't drain me. So it's easy for me to dishonor my time if I'm constantly working. That's complicated for me because I find joy in my work. You with me? So instead of me seeing five people a day, then I limit myself at three and then follow me at three. And then I have time to do create my content, write those emails for you and things like that. But if I'm filling my whole day up, then I can't honor, right? And I start to feel this scarcity of time. And time will always expand for you when you honor it, okay? I promise. It's, a, it's something that I've known for years. Time will expand when you honor it. So I'm, if I'm constantly dishonoring my time, then I'm always going to be in scarcity of not having enough. So that's an example for me. Do you see how it gets really minute in how we become aware of what we do? Okay, I, hear, I saw things. Um, sitting with me. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate that. You want to make time, Dina, to read uh, books again. Okay, you and I are kind of on the same wavelength here on this one. So I keep this book in my purse, okay? So when I have something like I went to acupuncture yesterday, and what if I get there five minutes early? Or what if she isn't quite ready when I get there? I carry this book in there so that I can use that time wisely. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Honoring my quiet side and need to need for quiet or without my ears. Yeah. You're very perceptive, Maureen. So I can see why, why you take things in mentally and then digest it mentally. Right. I love that. 
honor that quiet time. It, it'll help you. Mm -hmm. And then, Anne, you want to bring more movement into your daily life. You see yourself alternating between daily reading with music and dance movements. I think that's an amazing thing to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. And for me, I'm not, I'm not a power exerciser. Never have been. You might have heard me talk about that, where movement is what, if I can get movement every day, that's amazing for me. And that's enough for my body. Some people, though, they've got a ton of fire in their astrology. And so movement is how they process everything. That's how, how they, they can't get started without it. I, I love those people. And I have to quit trying to be like them, right? So Anna, just getting some daily movement through dance or a quick walk or a slow walk, right, is honoring your body. And I love that. And it's honoring your promise and commitment to yourself. You're living too much, um, Beth, on autopilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not And not in the moment to make the right, healthier food choices. Oftentimes, I have found, Beth, that our food choices happen for a lot of reasons, right? They do. There isn't one reason. We can inherit those addictive patterns. They can be a way that we learned behavior in a ch as a child because we were rewarded with food or food was used to comfort us. We can use it as self-reward and self-punishment because we don't deserve whatever it is we don't unconsciously or consciously deserve for that matter. So food becomes a sabotage. But it gets tricky because it can, we, can, we can consciously think that it's, that it's helping us, it's comforting us. We can even, um, there's a lot that can comes up around food. But if you will allow the process to change gradually, we'll work on this, then it, it will shift dramatically for you, okay? Yep, great one. Learning to change at a slower pace so you don't stress out. Yeah, kind of like for Sharon, for you, I think of it as just being in flow. You know, you're a feeler. I can feel, I, I know that you're a feeler. And kind of like me, when you do what's working or when, even if you've done something for a long time, just because you've done it this way forever doesn't mean you have to keep continuing to. Because that's what the last year and a half, two years almost have shown us. We're not to keep doing what we've been doing as a whole. So feel in, Sharon, feel into this, what has been working that maybe needs to be tweaked now, maybe needs to be done a little bit differently, okay? Maybe it's that somebody else is dependent on us for something else, and we need a little bit more space in our life to do some things we've been wanting to do, whether it's starting a business, whether it's writing a book, right? Whether, whatever it is. We can't create our life if we're always, right, if we're always letting other people disrupt our life. And I'm not saying you are. I just know you're a big giver. Okay? You must eat everything on your plate. Yep. Um, mm, yep, very good. Scarcity can cause us to eat. That's an inherited pattern of um, not having enough, enough food. Okay, or the fear of running out of food, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, very true. I um, years ago I worked with a lady that um, had some really severe stomach problems, and it was uh, it was a lot, but part of it was the inherited scarcity, and it went back actually when she did the genealogy. It was. Um, Oh, I wish she was on here. I don't remember the details. It's been a long time. But what had happened in her genealogy, when she did, she was a genealogy expert, there had been royalty that, that was betrayed. So they were walled up in a dungeon and starved to death. So she would overeat because of a fear of starving to death. Cleared it. And then she had so much fun figuring it out. We don't always get to figure out what it's about, but for her, it, it, she was able to do it. Yeah, so it's very cool. Okay, 
we are taught by our parents, but you'd be surprised, Sharon, it's not all taught. It can be an inherited pattern. They did it for a reason, right? So it's where, that's how come it gets complicated in the energy system and our cells of our body and our DNA is because it comes in for, from a variety of ways. And le learned behaviors are just as, as hard as unconscious behaviors. Mm -hmm. Because we can know we learned it, just like we can know that our parents were in scarcity when they said that we couldn't have you know, a new Easter dress or we couldn't go to the dance because they didn't have money or who do we think we are that we wanted something. We can know as an adult that that didn't serve us. But when something gets trapped around it, it'll show up in other areas, uh, areas of our life and we won't feel worthy to honor our own promises to ourselves. So it gets complicated, but it's un, it's, we can, you can untangle it, okay? Yeah. Yes, Anna, it's improving love. Thank you, thank you. All right, anybody have a question? Give it a sec. Starving children in China. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This will get put up there. This is a good one because it creates the ability, all right, on a deeper level to expand energetically. Think of it that way. It'll make it easier to approach these intentions or goals with a different frame mind and it won't be all or nothing that's a big deal all or nothing is complicated right hi rose hi dearest welcome welcome all right i you know i love being here i'm grateful for your, that you're here and listen to it again because it will help train the brain to accept positive change in your life all right Mm, sending you lots of love. Bye-bye.